Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Fabrice, your photographer. And today we're going to talk about a bunch of things that you as a beginner, you need to have and you need to know in order to become a professional photographer. All right, first thing you need, of course, if you want to become a professional photographer, you need a camera body, a camera. But the camera is created into the body and the lens and all the things that comes around like a speed light or a flashlight, a power grip and you know, everything. So first thing, you've got to get a camera. This is a DSLR from Nikon. Nikon, Nikon, depends on where in the world you are located. <laughs> I don't know, it's a Japanese brand, but Japanese call it Nikon. Other people say Nikon. In French, I say Nikon. Anyway, I love it. <laughs> I've been using Nikon. I've been shooting for Nikon for a little bit more than two years now. But I started with a Sony. I started with an entry-level Sony Alpha A200 DSLR. I didn't even know that the DSLR, you can interchange the lens and you can fix, you know, uh, all these buttons behind here had completely no sense to me. But when I started, and I've been doing it, and now I'm here to teach you. <laughs> so every single passion you have, just take your time, master it, go step by step, you're going to make it. Let's go back to the body. I'm using a 24.2 megapixel camera. I attach the power grip or the battery grip on my camera body, the 7200 from Nikon, which I use for a wide variety of shoots. I do landscape with this camera, I do portraiture, I do events, I do weddings, I do sports and motorsports and action, and I do macro photography as well with this camera body. So the choice of the camera body is very important. You need to put the focus on what style of photography you actually do. If you need a fast camera for a fast frame per second, range like 10 12 you need a faster camera definitely not the nikon 7200 if you need something that's average based on your budget for example then you can go for the aps-c sensor or the crop sensor camera bodies with large megapixel resolution uh, almost every brand out there delivers semi-professional cameras like you have nikon this is the top of the range, the Nikon D7200, now being uh, outpassed by his junior brother, the 7500, which is quite good, which is quite good. Then you need something, as I said, you need a camera body. Now you have your camera body, but your camera body cannot take photos on itself, so you need to attach a lens. Uh, this is a lens. This, in the occurrence, is a Tamron. 17 to 50 millimeters f 2.8 that I use for events and for group portraiture and for weddings. I also use this for my motorsports photography. But as I said, it depends on your creativity, what you want to do with your photo, what message you want to convey when you take a photograph. So for the beginners, this is how it works. This is the lens, you can zoom in and out, you can see uh, the opening of the aperture, oh yeah, you see, this is a 2.8 aperture, that big. Uh, let's try to mount this on a camera body and actually take some photograph. Alright, here we go. Tamron lens is a third-party lens that produces lenses for almost uh, all the camera brands, Nikon, Canon, Sony. So here is what it looks like when you mount your camera on your lens, your lens on your camera, sorry. And then you have to take photo. And here we go, I'm going to zoom right inside myself. Okay, ready? Done. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. That's what you get. Okay, now you are set, you are good to go. 
with your camera and your lens, you are good to go. But if you want to stand in this market, you want to stand in this industry, you need to have a whole bunch of things that will make you step a little bit higher than the average photographer, you know? Everybody can have a camera, everybody can take a photo with your phones, especially nowadays with the proliferation of the social media, you know, Instagram is a platform where every single person became a photographer. So, what you need to do is you need to get the right tool to get the right kind of clients for the right kind of job you design in your mind to be doing. Alright, in this case, let's say for example, because I have a, a couple of lenses, this is what I use for mostly events and landscape because it's a white white lens from 17 millimeters right up to 15. You can get okay. Let's let me exp, let me uh, show you all the collection of my lenses, which is not proud of. I have the 70 to 300 millimeters from Nikon. It's a huge big zoom lens from 17 to 300 millimeters. It has the vibration reduction. This is what I use for my sports, action and motorsport photography. I have the macro, the Tamron macro 90mm f2.8. This is what I use for the macro photography. I also use this for some portraiture because of the details this lens gives. It's just awesome. I also have the Nikon, the ultimate, the almighty. And the, I love this lens. This is my everything. The 85mm f1.8G version from Nikon. This is, if you want to do portraiture, this is going to be your everyday goal, your everyday lens. It never goes out of your bag. Alright, I have a, this is what we call a converter, macro converter. It's a macro converter, you can attach it to any lens if you want, if you don't have enough cash, enough bucks to get your macro lens, which is quite expensive. So, camera body lenses, you are good to go. Okay, here are some other accessories or other tools that you may need in case to get your job done to be a professional photographer. Of course you need memory cards. How could I forget? Memory cards, you have a lot out there in the market. You can have, if you are shooting sports and something fast, 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 you need these extreme cards, extreme cards, yeah, get into focus, please. 32 gigs, 32 gigs, 32 gigs. I'm gonna explain everything in another video. I have another 32, this is 48 megabytes per second, and this is 90 megabytes per second. So it's all about the speed of your memory card. You need speed lights speed lights or flashes, they call it speed lights. I go for the third party, I use the Godox. I can use one on slave, one on main, one on main, one on slave, or I can use the, the diffuser or the transmitter on my camera and I set this right here, this angle, it depends on the shot I have in mind. This is a video that I just want to brush what you need to become a professional photographer. Oh, you need a tripod. Yeah, you need a tripod. After that, you need, hold on, you need filters. Yeah, and here we are. Filters for your lenses. What is filters? I'm gonna do another video later and explain exactly what is what are filters. Filters, you have the neutral, neutral density filter, you have the circular polarizer filter, you have the UV filter, you have the neutral density. Yeah. I'm gonna give every single detail on every single item I am showing to you guys now in other video when I'm gonna do everything in detail. I'm just showing, as I said, so what you need to be called or to act or to perform as a professional photographer. Uh, this is a small Chinese camera that I bought, action camera, that I use to record myself, you know, take some archive of myself, quite cheap, 
just a few bucks, you can get it. Like 20 bucks, 20 US dollars, or like 18 euros, you can get it. Uh, you need a proper camera strap. This is a quick release camera strap, very comfortable here. This kind of uh, sponge when I put it in my shoulder, so you don't really feel the weight of your camera. It's very comfortable, very relaxing. Rather than having this around your neck, which can cause you some trouble in the future. So you need a quick release strap that you will attach at the end here, the bottom here. You're gonna attach it on your camera, just like this. Yeah, that's how it goes. Well, you need something to clean all this little bunch of things. You need the cleaning set, the cleaning cloth, and this is what keeps some clothes on air. You just in there or on the lens around to remove the dust. Yep, that's how it goes. Okay, you need hard drive to save your pictures. You need to save your, your work, save your photos in a hard drive because you don't keep them on your laptop. One day you never know your laptop will crash. Even your hard drive can crash if you can purchase a whole bunch of terabytes in the cloud. It's gonna work. But it's always good to have something close to yourself. What do we have? Again, we have all the other accessories that can work if you're gonna do portrait show. Fairy lights, you know, yeah. You're gonna do, if you wanna take photos of a princess, for example, you've got to use these things. I'm gonna put one or two examples of the shoots that I had before using all of this in another video. You need a prism. The prism is an awesome, very awesome tool that you're gonna use for your portraiture. If the prism can work, not really. <laughs> but this is it. It's a prism. It gives some light effects that you don't need special editing techniques to add. You just buy this. It's like uh, very cheap, very cheap. You can get it on eBay. You can get it on AliExpress. Very cheap. What else do you need? You need a crystal ball. Boom. Who knows this? Yeah. This is a hundred millimeter diameter crystal ball. I'll put a link in the description so that you can have access to this and see what kind of photography style you can do with a crystal ball. This is a crystal ball. I'm gonna predict the future. <laughs> I use this mostly for my cityscapes and some wedding shots that I'm going to show you later in another video. What else do we have here? We have the fairy lights, the crystal ball. You need a reflector and a diffuser. Be careful, you have to handle this with care, it can blow. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. It brings shade to your subject if you're doing portraiture. It brings reflection to your subject if you're in a shady place. It also acts like a diffuser of the light. If the light is too harsh. Sorry, I'm gonna come after that. You can diffuse the light on top of your subject like, like this. You see the light is evenly distributed. Too harsh evenly distributed. Yeah, if you have an assistant to do the job for you, it works. It works perfectly. Okay, this is how you fold it back. You can get this from online platforms. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna finish with this later on. Okay, so basically this is all you need. It's gonna take some money, but uh, this is all you need to do the job and you do the job properly. Thank you for following. Let me know if I've omitted something. You guys can let me know and in the next video I can improve. If you ever tried other things, uh, your experience when you started photography. These things right here behind, I'm gonna talk about them later in another video. This is studio setting. You have the, go through the, the umbrella. 
you have the diffuser continuous lighting. There's another one here in front, continuously lighting my face for the video. <laughs> you have uh, the studio lights, the proper flashlight that is there over there, but I can't turn the camera. I'm gonna do it in another video. And uh, basically, that's it. This is what you need to start and become successful. But the most important tool that I'm going to tell you guys, okay, two, two, two things. Your eyes, the way you see things, and your brain, your mind, the way you are creative. It's out of your creative, creative, create, 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 creative, creativity. Out of your creativity, guys, that you're going to set yourself in the next stage, to the next level, you know. You, can, you have to keep shooting, you have to keep practicing, keep educating yourself, you have to know this exactly what you want and you go for it. This thing should be your food. You sleep with it, you dream with it. What am I saying? <laughs> it's a tool. But this is a tool and this is what does the job. So guys, thank you for watching me. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, if you have any suggestion, if I omitted something, you put it in a comment, you like, and you share to your friends and you subscribe for more videos coming soon. Studio setting, portrait tips and tricks, uh, motorsports, action, photography, tricks and tips. You know all these things that we see on the YouTube. <laughs> it's so good to be on YouTube, you know? And uh, yeah, that's it. Let me sign out. See what's going on. All right. Thanks, guys. This is done. Thank you for listening to Joe Israel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.